Hello and welcome to another episode of Japanese Snack Reviews. This episode is dedicated to the snacks from the September 2022 Japan Crate. And so we're starting with an item from the August 2022 Japan Crate. Um, when I was basically going through, kind of deciding what snacks to put in this video, I realised I completely forgot about this which came in August, which is the shrimp flavoured scone or sukonu. Uh, scone, uh, potato chips, or crisps, or maize snacks, uh, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so, I'm going to start off the September 22, 2022 video by having a snack from the previous month. Uh, these are very, very interesting. I do love me some weird flavoured crisps, and these feel like, um, they're quite hard. They're a bit like Cheetos, so very much looking forward to that. So, without further ado, I'm going to rip into it, and we'll take a look first. Oh, those look pretty darn nice. Right, I'm going to grab one. Oh, as predicted, so these are like, well, these are exactly like, there's a British uh, potato chip called Knickknacks, which are very, like, knobbly corn kind of things. So, I'm going to go give this a try. Hmm, that is quite interesting. Um, So... It's got the same crunch as knickknacks do. It's definitely like a corn, kind of crispy baton kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's, it's very satisfying. It's got a lovely crunch. The taste is a bit strange. So it tastes more like generic seafood than shrimp, if that makes sense. I've had a few seafood flavoured things in the past. And it definitely tastes more like that than it does shrimp, I think, really. Um, yeah, I'm going to have another one. Yeah, I've got to say, this is definitely more of a kind of fishy seafood kind of taste than a specific shrimp one. However, it is quite nice. Um, it's got a tiny little bit of kick to it, like a really small, like peppery kind of kick to it. Sorry, that was my Alexa alarm going off. Um, yeah, so overall, you know, these aren't bad. I can see them being quite addictive, um, as knickknacks are really. You have a few and suddenly you're at the end of the bag. But you know, there's a decent amount in these. They're nice, but don't expect a very strong, specific shrimp flavour. But yeah, definitely going to keep an eye out for scone stuff in the future as well, because I do love me some knickknacks. Right, on to the next snack. Alright, so this is another late edition. This is also from the August 2022 box. And this is Peach Chan. Uh, apparently these are sweet and sour peach candy kind of things, and the packaging is adorable. So I'm going to try not to ruin it. Hey, there we are. So, let's grab one. Ooh, okay, ah! Ah, they've got little faces on the packaging as well. That is adorable. And there it says, Peachian. Peachian. Or Peachchan. Nice, right, well, let's open it up. I am curious to see how sweet and sour this is. Um, typically... The last few sour things I've had from Japan have been not particularly sour, so that is what it looks like. I'm going to go give one a try. Alright, so I've I've had one. Um, yeah, I've got to admit, it's, it's not really sour, uh, as predicted. It does taste very strongly of peach. It is very nice. It's, um, yet again, with all the other stuff... It does taste of Japanese peach, which does taste a little bit different from sort of Western artificial peach flavours. And yeah, they're nice. They're, they're quite hard. They last for a while. You know, there's a good like five, ten minutes. You know, could have one in your mouth really before it dissolves. But yeah, um, very, very, very mild hints of sourness occasionally. But overall, it is just generally quite sweet and very pleasant. Actually, I can easily see myself just grabbing one of these... I fancy a little bit of a hit of sugar or something. But yeah, these are, these are very nice. I do love the packaging as well. And the fact that they all, presumably, have little faces on them. That's adorable. Right, on to the next snack. Alright, it is time for the Cookies and Cream Kit Kat. So, quite looking forward to this one. We'll take a look at the back quickly. Those are some other flavours. I think the green one would have been Matcha Green Tea. Uh, which is, personally, one of my favourite um, Kit Kat flavours, because matcha's quite sort of bitter, 
uh, the chocolate kind of makes it a little bit sweet so so there is the smaller pack obviously this is filled with like 20 I think or like 15 or something of these so let's crack into it now as the last two months unfortunately because it's been summer in Japan and quite hot around the world these Kit Kats have kind of melted uh, I can definitely feel through the packaging now this one is uh, a little bit a little bit melted but it's not really an issue so here oh man okay that was very melted here it is in all its uh, perfectly formed glory so it's time to take a bite wow okay that is one of the best non-fruit Kit Kat flavors I've ever had um it's really creamy it obviously it tastes very much of the cream in the cookies and cream did the cookies flavor couldn't really pick up on that much maybe there was a hint of like chocolate in there but honestly that is really creamy that's delightful i'm gonna have the rest of it wow that was very nice um i don't think i've had the cookies and cream kit kat before i've had quite a few flavors now i'd, I'd say i've had over about 10 of them but yeah hands down that is one of the best non-fruit flavor kit kats i've ever had um so far, out of the three we've had since I started back with Japan Crate in 2022, that is hands down the best. That is really nice. Um, yeah, I'll be keeping an eye out for these because uh, in future I may get some more. Those were delicious. Right, well, on to the next snack. All right, you ready for Ire Beji? Uh, which is literally a shortening of Ireven Beji. Uh, I butchered that basically uh this these are um vegetable sticks made using 11 vegetables the challenge is can you name them also the pack design is incredible uh so let's crack this open and uh see if i can name all 11 vegetables play at home uh if, if you have one of these if you don't you're not gonna not gonna do very well so that's what they're like they're like crispy kind of um biscuity kind of thing not biscuit you know what i mean a uh, kind of yeah a, a crackery kind of thing so i'm gonna give it a try hmm okay um picked up on a few things i'm gonna have another one just so i get a good taste of these all right so i i can definitely taste the carrot and i think like cauliflower or swede maybe uh, actually cauliflower and I presume uh, that's cabbage maybe so cauliflower cabbage and carrot um I'm not picking up much else maybe potato um it's really hard to tell I mean trying to taste 11 different vegetables from like crackers is <laughs> quite the challenge really um honestly I'm gonna stick with those and say potato maybe sweet potato but I think the sweetness is from the carrot and not the sweet potato. They're quite nice though. They are genuinely nice. They're, they're a bit different. Because um, you do get that hit of like they do taste of vegetables. Which is pretty cool. Because um, usually these are kind of just salted. Or you know they're trying to taste like cheese or something. So yeah that's pretty cool. I actually quite like these. Not bad. Right on to the next snack. It is time for Shimmy Choco Salt Vanilla. So um... Yeah, this is apparently a kind of seasonal um, taste, so I guess autumn-wise. Uh, these apparently, they're like star-shaped things, as we will see in a second. They taste all vanilla, but they've got a hint of salt to them as well. Um, I think there was a Kit Kat, wasn't there? White chocolate and salt that we got two crates ago. They were pretty nice. Um, so let's see if Shimmy Choco lives up to them. So... I've had these before, I've had the like chocolate variety before. I've not had any white chocolate versions though. So this is vanilla and salt. Let's give it a taste. Hmm, that's actually kind of, that's quite nice. Um, so the Chimmy Choco thing, I'll give them credit. Uh, I've had a few packs and varieties of these now. So it is crispy kind of puff, you know, puffy kind of cone kind of stuff. Not cone, you know what I mean, like puffy snacks. But the it is generously covered in chocolate. You always get a decent amount of chocolate with it as well. And a lot of things like this will be kind of coated in chocolate, but you'll barely... It's not really thick or anything. It just kind of seeps into it. But honestly, these are really nice. Um, 
And yeah, this tastes... It's kind of milky vanilla. It, it is vanilla milk, I think. So it tastes a bit of like milky vanilla. And you get the hint of the kind of tang of salt. Um, that is actually genuinely quite nice. Um, probably my favourite shimmy choco flavour. Maybe. I don't know. I've not eaten a ton of them. So, you know, my... I may get tired of the taste for some reason, but honestly, so far, these are really solid, actually. Probably, possibly one of my favourite things of the crate. Um, right, anyway, on to the next snack. All right, time for some Arare French dressing. So, these are apparently old school kind of rice snacks that are curly, and taste of French dressing, which... I'm pretty sure is kind of um, kind of like salad dressing, right? Or is it like mayonnaise? I'm not sure. Anyway, that's what they look like. Let's pull one out. Oh, that's cool. So they're kind of like knobbly rice rice sticks, basically. They look very nice. Right, let's give them a go. Hmm. Okay. Um. I'll be honest. I've just had one and. It tastes a lot like a rice stick, or a rice cake stick, or whatever they're called. I call them rice sticks. I've had these before. Um, not these specific ones, obviously. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just tastes kind of savoury. I'm going to have another one. Yeah, honestly, I'm not getting a massive amount of flavour. It's kind of... It tastes, as I say, savoury. A little bit salty, as, you know, rice sticks also, um, uh, usually do. Um... Yeah, I don't know, there's maybe like a little bit of a hint of like, it's, it's, it tastes a bit like salad cream. Maybe is what I'm kind of picking up, but I couldn't really say. They're very nice, and honestly, incredibly Moorish. I'll definitely be eating quite a lot of these. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I, I wouldn't say they taste very distinct from other rice sticks, but they are very high quality rice sticks. So, if we're in the mood for that, you know, definitely recommended, but... We're a big fan of French dressing, unless it's a very mild flavoured thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. But they're very nice though. Anyway, on to the next snack. Okay, it's time for pie fruit X Coolish. Uh, so they I think we've had these before um, in a previous Japanese snack review not too long ago. Uh, but if I'm correct, they're sort of biscuity things with sort of chocolate in the middle, um, which are quite nice. You know, they weren't the best, but the, the chocolate inside was quite nice. Now, uh, Coolish is, I don't know exactly what Coolish is, but uh, it's got a vanilla filling, so I'm guessing maybe Coolish is like a vanilla biscuit or something. Now, apparently these can be enjoyed chilled, so what I'm going to do is have one unchilled, uh, just as a kind of test, and then I will put some in the fridge and um, I guess I'll leave it like a while, or maybe till tomorrow, and then I'll try it chilled to see if it like brings out anything extra. So uh, there they are. So as you can see, they're kind of puffed pastry kind of things. Oh wow, the smell of vanilla is incredibly strong. So yeah, they're kind of puffed pastry things. I'll take a bite to show you inside. And that's the inner filling, and honestly, these are way better than the chocolate ones. So I think it was um, the month before last, July as it might have been. Um, we had chocolate pie fruit. And to be honest, it was fine. The chocolate was very bog standard mid. Um, but I like the crunchiness and the crispiness of the pastry. But this, honestly, this filling is incredible. I'm going to have the other half. All right, that was very nice at room temperature. Um, it's just a very, very nice vanilla uh, flavour. It's a little bit, I don't want to say fruity, but it's a little bit light, if that makes sense. It's not necessarily just standard vanilla. Anyway, I'm going to go put these in the fridge now uh, for a while and see if that actually changes how I enjoy this. It's probably not going to make much difference, but we'll see. All right, so you can't really tell it, but I have left this in the fridge overnight. Um, it's quite cool. I pulled it out about Two, three minutes ago, so these should be nice and chilled now. So I'm going to grab another one. They they look the same, as you'd imagine. I'm going to go take a bite. Hmm, interestingly, um, there, there's barely any difference. The filling is a little bit colder, 
Uh, it is a little bit cool, I guess. But all of the pastry and stuff doesn't feel cold at all. And this has been in the fridge for about, I don't know, 12 hours plus now. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have one more. Um, yeah, I'd say overall, um, the, there's, there's no difference. They're really nice. Um, the, the vanilla and the filling and stuff is great. But, yeah, you, you don't need to chill them, really, unless... You live in a really hot place, maybe. I don't know, if it was like the height of summer, maybe chill, chilling them would be better. But yeah, these are really nice, just don't need to be chilled. Anyway, on to the next snack. You all ready for some Moomins? Because I, I am, I guess. Uh, as you can see, we have the Moomin Valley Biscuit Coca flavour. So this is Mama Moomin, or mo Mommy Moomin, uh, Mother Moomin, I don't know what she's called. I don't think I've ever watched the Moomins. I do know the fun fact that the first half of the Moomin animated TV series uh, was directed by someone and then started including guns and everything, so they kind of took it away from that studio and gave it to a different studio that, that didn't have Moomins wielding guns, which is understandable. Uh, right, anyway, we've got... Ah, uh, oh, Trumpkin, right? Is that his name? I think so. Wait, no, that's the Narnia guy, isn't it? I'm sure his name is similar though. Trumpkin's the, um, he's a dwarf in Narnia, isn't he? Anyway, uh, that looks like that character. Let's give him a bite. Something horrible has happened to him. Um, yeah, these are kind of nice. They're like airy cookies, basically. I'm going to go have the other half. All right, I'm going to have another one as well. I presume they are different Moomins and not just the same dude. Uh, yay, we, ooh, good Christ, what is that? That looks like a tiger monster thing, I guess. I don't know, if you're a Moomins fan, let me know in the comments below. I do not recognise that. Was there an owl? Is there an owl or a duck or something? Anyway, I'm going to go eat this. I'm not going to lie. It's not very cocoa-y. Um, the biscuits are nice. As I say, they're quite airy. They're quite sort of the texture of a cookie, I suppose. As in, like, a British cookie. Uh, I know all biscuits in America are cookies, technically. Um, but yeah. Not bad, but I mean, don't expect the cookie, uh, the cocoa flavour, it's just like a biscuit. But they are very nice, they've got a nice, satisfying crunch to them. Uh, especially for a Moomins fan. I'm, I'm not though, so, I mean, these don't mean a lot to me. Anyway, on to the next snack. Alright, so we've got the watermelon gummies up next with Rilakkuma down there, he's holding a watermelon. So these are like... I think I've had similar, uh, or maybe particular these specific gummies before. Basically, they're kind of chewy, but they've got a bit of watermelon juice in the middle, if that makes sense. So that's them there. Oh, hang on. That is the gummy itself. So as you can tell, it's like a round thing. It's very chewy, and it's got some uh, juice in the middle. So I'm going to go give this a chew. All right. I don't know what it is about Japanese gummy sweets. But the gumminess is always like a little bit tougher, a little bit harder than I'm used to. I don't know if Western gummy sweets are like just softer by design. But it's, it's kind of interesting. I mean, it does feel more substantial the more you chew it. And yeah, the inside is very watermelony. Um, it's got, I mean, it's got that fake watermelon flavour. It doesn't taste exactly like a watermelon. But honestly, I really like these. Um, I mean, I'm a sucker for watermelon, be it fake or real. So, you know, I, I give these a high score anyway. I'd certainly buy them if I was in, like, a Japanese supermarket or something. But yeah, not bad. Um, does what it says on the tin, basically, or the packet. It's not in a tin. Anyway, on to the next snack. All right, it's time to get a little bit sour. So these are umeboshi. Um, and they are Japanese plums, which are quite sour, so... Quite looking forward to this. I haven't had any Japanese sour things uh, in a while. I think I did have a sour paper last month uh, in the last Japanese snack reviews episode. And it was fine. Um, it wasn't that sour, really. So we got a kind of pink ball, I guess. Let's give it a try. So that one took a while, actually. Um, <laughs> yet again, they're, they're not that sour. Um, I had one all the way to the centre, and to be fair, it started off kind of sweet. Um, it tasted very heavily of plum, obviously. Um, got to the kind of centre of it, and I was hoping, oh man, you know, it's going to get sour. No, not really. It got a little bit more sour than 
initially because it's very sweet at the start but it just kind of tastes a lot of kind of sweetish plum uh, I, I wasn't getting any of the sour stuff I'm not going to have another one because it took me like five minutes or something to get to the middle they're fine um, very plum flavoured just don't expect to have your face melt off alright uh, on to the drink all right, it is time for the drink of the uh, box, and this is cream soda, Kurimu soda. Um, and so this, apparently, this can, as I mentioned in my unboxing video, is meant to look like nostalgic. Now, obviously, I didn't grow up in Japan. I've never been to Japan, so it doesn't look nostalgic to me, but I guess like the ridges or something. But anyway, let's crack this open. So I'm a big fan of cream soda. I don't think I've ever had Japanese cream soda. So the cup is coming out again. Let's uh, pour a decent amount. Ooh. Okay, this is quite, quite fizzy. It's not as clear as I thought it would be, which is always good, I find. I've had some cream sodas in the past that are very clear, and they just, they're just they mildly sweet. Anyway, I'm going to go take a sip. All right, that is really interesting, actually. Um, so the cream soda I've had uh, in the West, obviously, is it's generally very sweet sort of lemonade, basically. Um, but this is different. This really does um, embody the cream part of this. Like, drinking it, you kind of get the, like, kick of... I don't know, milk or cream or something like that. It's really interesting, actually, because it is sweet. It's as sweet as a regular cream soda. But you do get the bonus of the kind of, like, smoothness of cream afterwards. I'm going to have another sip. Yeah, I am really digging that. The more you drink, the kind of more you get used to the taste, I guess. this It I, it was not the taste I was exactly expecting, but I'm, I'm really enjoying this. That... That is really nice. I'm going to keep an eye out for this, uh, if and when I do buy some Japanese drinks and stuff, because that, that is very nice. Probably one of the best drinks I've had from Japan, great. Uh, so yeah, kudos to them. Right, over to the DIY kit. Alright, it is time for the DIY kit, or so the DIY drink, I guess, in this case. Uh, because this is the Shin-chan's Experiment DIY kit. So this is Crayon Shin-chan, obviously. I've never really watched any Shin-chan, but I've had a ton of snacks on Japan Crate over the years. So basically the rundown is, you get two powders, you pour them into the flask along with some water, and it'll change colour, I believe. So uh, I'm going to pull everything out. So you get a conical flask, which is always cool. So these are, ooh, and a free elastic band as well. Uh, and a, oh, and a straw. Okay, that makes sense. Um, the description on the um, on this cheat sheet here does say, "Oh, with a straw." And I was thinking, "Well, I, I don't have a straw, but and that's the flask." And get rid of this. Um, right. Okay. So sorry for the jump cut there. Uh, right. So I have everything here. We've got uh, Shin Chan's face on the front of the conical flask. It's a hard bit of plastic. It is uh, square on the bottom, so you can stand it up. So, first off, I have to pour 100 millilitres of water, which I'll go and do now. All right. So, there's 100 millilitres of water in there. So, the first thing is, we put in the purple powder. So, I would, um, I would just jump cut to the final thing, but I thought, hey, if we're doing an experiment, we're going to do it together. So... Try and uh, carefully place this in. Hey, look at that. That's very purple. Uh, that's incredibly so, actually. Got a little bit on my fingers. That just kind of tastes of sugar. Um, ooh, maybe grape, actually. That would make sense. Uh, I've got some on my table, but I'll, I'll clean that up later. That is the joys of Japanese DIY kits. You will get powder everywhere. Uh, anyway, this is the second one, I do believe. Let's see if that says anything. Fushigi. Um, and the, the rest is in kanji. Uh, which is fine. I am now going to add that. So this is dissolved, I think. I'm going to twirl it around a little bit. So I think the whole point of this is that it'll turn into a magical third colour. 
Now, I have genuinely been curious, because purple and red, I don't know what purple and red makes, because purple is a combination of red and blue. So, like, I don't know. Anyway, I add this to the water, as so. Uh, no, and it's kind of turned a bit red now, sort of. Very red, actually. It's overtaken the purple. Um, right, I'm also going to, like, swirl this around a little bit. Oh, wait, is it lightning? No, no, it's not. It's just a trick of the light. Um, just looks red. Um, and then I'm going to leave it for a minute. Maybe it'll, like, change colour. I'll go and clean up the table and I'll be right back. Alright, so I've left it about a minute now. Um, I think it's just turned red, to be honest. I think that is uh, the final kind of colour it's going to be. Um, it's interesting that it turned from purple to red, I guess. So that was unexpected. I thought it would kind of go brown or something, really. That's a look at the top. Right, so all that's left to do now is, as with any good uh, experiment, especially if you're using conical flasks, Take a sip of whatever's inside. So that's what I'm going to go do. That is quite interesting, actually. So it's very fizzy. Uh, I mean, obviously, I've dumped a ton of uh, powders into it, so it makes sense. But yeah, it's very fizzy, very fruity. Now, I want to say it's like strawberry or something is what I'm picking up. Strawberry and, like, grape or something? Um, yeah, honestly, I'm kind of digging this. Um... It does make me wonder, actually, on a kind of separate note, but you know these, like, magic powders for the DIY things that, like, turn water into jelly or, like, fizzy things or whatever? Can you, like, buy those just separate? Are they, like, particular chemicals? Well, not chemicals, you know what I mean. They are for consumption by humans, but... Or I guess it's kind of like Kool-Aid. Um, so, fun fact, in the UK, we, we don't have Kool-Aid. I did buy some Kool-Aid once. It was very nice. I might buy some more Kool-Aid, actually, because kind of in the mood to add powder into water and have it be fizzy, you know? But yeah, um, right, well, I'm going to go take one more sip. All right, now I'm picking up hints of orange. It's like it's very orange in taste now. Um, okay, maybe that's the point of the experiment. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching this episode of Japanese Snack Reviews. That is it for the September uh, crate. And we'll, of course, be doing October's one. Uh, the October uh, Halloween special unboxing video is already up. I haven't even started any of the snacks from that yet. But that'll probably be up maybe the end of October, early November, as this is up early October when it came out in September. You, you know the drill. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. If there is a snack from the October Halloween uh, Japan crate that you'd like me to specifically try, let me know in the comments of this video and I'll make um, I'll make an effort to include that in the video. Because obviously I'm not going to do all like 20-ish snacks. Because um, some of them are just a little bit boring, to be honest. Like, ooh, this is a vanilla biscuit. Well, everyone's seen those. Or like chewing gum. Everyone knows what chewing gum is. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. As I said, I will be putting up uh, a lot more of these in the future once a month. So until next time, goodbye.